I would like to start this presentation by relating to you what John Corrin said when he gave his presidential address to the American Statistical Association on February 13, 1914, on the occasion of the association's 75th anniversary. His opening remarks went like this. A page of the unpretentious volume containing the first proceeding of our society bears this legend. Here close the records of the American Statistical Association for the first quarter of a century. Indeed, there seems to have been something prophetic in the words, here close the records of the American Statistical Association for the first quarter of a century. Who wrote them look forward to other milestones in the history of our organization, to new and perhaps ampler records of achievement, and we are gathered to bear testimony that his faith did not belie him. So spoke John Corrin 75 years ago. In that same spirit, this presentation has been made in celebration of the achievements sustained for a century and a half by the American Statistical Association. On November 27, 1839, five men met at number 15 Cornhill in Boston to found a statistical society. The founders were the Honorable Richard Fletcher, a U.S. congressman and influential leader of the Boston Bar, who became the society's first president. William Cogswell, a Protestant minister of great influence in the New England states. John Dix Fisher, a physician. Oliver Peabody, a lawyer, clergyman, and early assistant editor of the North American Review. And last, Lemuel Shattuck, a publisher, a bookseller, and a friend of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who retired from his business to take up the affairs of city, state, and nation. It is presumed that these men had little formal training in mathematics beyond arithmetic. In fact, Shattuck, the man responsible for gathering this hand-picked group, stands alone as the statistician. By 1839, Shattuck had shown a deep interest in the tabulation and interpretation of statistics relating to births, marriages, mortalities, and education in Concord and Boston, and was in correspondence with the leading European statisticians of that time. The objectives of the American Statistical Society, as it was called for a brief time after its inception, were simple. To collect, preserve, and diffuse statistical information in the different departments of human knowledge. The founders set about writing bylaws, incorporating the association in Massachusetts, establishing a library, and beginning a series of publications. They agreed to meet quarterly, to present reports, and to require all members to, quote, prepare at least one article a year on some statistical subject, end quote. These early reports and publications focused primarily on enumeration and description of social or demographic data. Reverend Joseph Felt, the Society's first recording secretary and a member of the Publication Committee, took the lead in preparing these early works. The collection of these early works into a library was aided by the generous monetary contributions of the second president of the American Statistical Association, George Shattuck, who was no relation to Lemuel Shattuck. Early meetings also included the reading of correspondence, letters from such honorary members as President Martin Van Buren, Florence Nightingale, and Belgian scientist Adolf Ketele, one of the leading statisticians of the 19th century. Ketele had published extensively in statistics and astronomy. He was influential in establishing the Statistical Society of London in 1834, later to become the Royal Statistical Society. Ketele's interest in astronomy led him to the works of Legendre, Laplace, and Gauss in the early part of the 19th century. In 1805, Legendre had discovered the method of least squares, and by 1810, Laplace and Gauss had synthesized the normal probability distribution and least squares into a coherent framework with many applications in astronomy and geodesy. In the mid-19th century, Catalay proceeded in great earnest to apply these ideas to the study of human populations. His work laid the foundation for quantified investigation in the social sciences and he sought to establish the laws of society, a social physics as he called it, similar to the physical laws of astronomy that were established in the previous century. His writings influenced many throughout Europe, especially Francis Galton, the English naturalist, and first cousin of Charles Darwin. Like Ketelet, Galton struggled with the problem of describing the variability observed in many social and natural phenomena. While astronomers viewed this variability as errors of the measurement process, Galton recognized the need to explain the distribution of the measurements. 
as we will see shortly, his work on these problems became part of the foundation for modern statistics. In the United States, statistical science of the 19th century continued to deal primarily with data gathering, classification, and administrative reporting. By 1850, the American Statistical Association had developed a close relationship with the U.S. government for conducting the decennial census. Lemuel Shattuck had been successful in conducting a census of Boston in 1845 as a reaction to serious errors in the 1840 U.S. Census reports. Edward Jarvis, a medical doctor, was another one of the first to recognize the misrepresentation of blacks and the insane in the 1840 census. Jarvis was elected president of ASA in 1852 and consulted on the censuses of 1850, 1860, and 1870. Jarvis remained president of ASA for 31 years until he retired in 1882, and Francis Walker, the foremost statistician in the United States at the time, was elected president. Walker, a general at the end of the Civil War, had been the federal census superintendent in 1870 and again in 1880, while also serving as president of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He saw the need to increase the awareness of statistical science and to support statistical education. His ASA presidential address of 1897 stated firmly, the United States have spent millions and tens of millions upon the collection, compilation, and publication of statistics. And yet they have never spent, perhaps $10,000, certainly the government has never spent anything in the training and preparing the men who should conduct the statistical service of the country. Now, while our government has been thus delinquent, our colleges and universities have done almost nothing. Under Walker's leadership and the assistance of Davis Dewey, a young professor at MIT and secretary of ASA, a quarterly publication now known as the Journal of the American Statistical Association, or JASA, was founded in 1888. Walker also made a concerted effort to include academicians in the ASA, which up to then consisted largely of lawyers, public officials, and those in the social and health sciences. Membership included such notable figures as Herman Hollerith, Andrew Carnegie, and Alexander Graham Bell, and grew to more than 500 during Walker's presidency, which lasted until 1897. Walker also wanted to make ASA an acknowledged national association, and in 1896, ASA began to hold meetings in other cities, initially in Washington, D.C. Under the leadership of Jarvis and then Walker, the ASA vigorously supported the use of demographic statistics by the federal government. Their efforts helped lead to the establishment of the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 1885. The Bureau's first director, Carol Wright, ultimately followed Walker as president of ASA from 1898 to 1909. The ASA also provided tremendous support for the establishment of a permanent census bureau in 1902. Simon North, the first Census Bureau director, followed Wright as president of ASA in 1910 and was the first president to serve a single-year term. Unlike the Americans, the leading English scholars in statistics took a more mathematical route. In the 1870s and 1880s, Francis Galton began what was to be a long legacy of statistical development in Britain when he formulated his notions of correlation and regression as he studied heredity in sweet peas and human populations. Fellow English scholar Francis Edgeworth supplied some of the more rigorous mathematical formulations of correlation and regression. Carl Pearson, an applied mathematician and philosopher of science, brought the techniques into prominence with the assistance of Udney Yule by teaching these techniques at University College London in the late 1890s. Throughout the decade of the 1890s, while Francis Walker was lamenting the state of statistical science in the U.S., English scholars were making statistics a discipline worthy of study in its own right. In 1891, Florence Nightingale wrote to Galton, pleading that he use his influence to obtain a statistical professorship or readership at the University of Oxford for the teaching of social physics. The ultimate goal for such a position was to teach people how to use statistics in order to legislate for and to administer our national life. While that professorship did not materialize, Carl Pearson did take up the challenge of teaching statistical science. 
Along with Walter Weldon, a Cambridge zoologist, Pearson founded the Biometrical School at University College London, which was to become a center of statistical learning and research for many years. Pearson was committed to make statistics a branch of applied mathematics with a technique and nomenclature of its own to train statisticians as men of science and in general to convert statistics into a serious branch of science which no man could attempt to use effectively without adequate training. Pearson was an enormously energetic man whose contributions to statistical theory, methods and applications include more than 300 publications. Besides his formulation on the sample product moment correlation coefficient, Pearson published major works on multivariate normal correlation, multiple linear and polynomial regression, general measures of association for categorical data, and large sample estimation and distribution theory. One of his most famous works, the chi-square test for goodness of fit, was published in 1900. This comparison between what is observed in a collection of data and what is hypothesized by scientific theory is a fundamental theme of statistical analysis and one of the great scientific developments of the 20th century. At Weldon's suggestion, Pearson founded the journal Biometrica in 1901 and was its principal editor until his death in 1936. Although his contributions to science span many disciplines, including mechanics, eugenics, and philosophy, Carl Pearson is most notable as the founder of statistical science. The mathematical approach to statistics continued unabated in England as Udney Yule further elaborated the mathematics of correlation and regression in the early 1900s. Retrieving the method of least squares to define the new technique to be called regression analysis, Yule also wrote the first authoritative text in mathematical statistics, An Introduction to the Theory of Statistics. First published in 1911, this book went through 10 editions and remained the definitive theoretical statistics treatise through the late 1930s, when Maurice Kendall became a co-author and then extended the work to his own book, The Advanced Theory of Statistics. Although Yule's work reflected Pearson's interest in studies based upon examination of statistically large numbers of specimens, others began taking interest in data collected from small-scale laboratory experiments and from agricultural field trials. One such individual was William Gossett, who had studied at Pearson's biometrical laboratory. In 1908, Gossett, under the pseudonym Student, extended the comparison of two means to small samples, developing the t-test to compare varieties of barley used at the Guinness Brewery. In that same year, Gossett also derived the small sample distribution for the sample correlation coefficient arising from a bivariate normal distribution with correlation equal to zero. Several years later, Gossett's work was read by Ronald Fisher, who had graduated from Cambridge in 1912. One of Ronald Fisher's earliest contributions to mathematical statistics was the extension of Gossett's work to the distribution of the sample correlation coefficient for any sample size and any degree of correlation. Fisher's work, completed while he was teaching mathematics and physics in English public schools, was quickly recognized by Pearson, who readily published it in Biometrica in 1915. In 1919, Fisher took a position involved with agricultural research at the Rothamsted Experimental Station, an event which accelerated the development of statistical science. In his 14 years at Rothamsted, Fisher's contributions to mathematical statistics and statistical methods were many and varied. Fisher either developed or laid the foundation for much of today's statistical theory and methodology. Some of his major contributions were maximum likelihood, which had its seed in his 1915 work on correlation, sampling distribution theory, consistency and efficiency of estimators, sufficient statistics, randomization, and experimental design. Perhaps the greatest legacy to statistics, or to science in general, from Fisher's days at Rothamsted, is his work on experimental design, as exemplified by his 1926 paper, The Arrangement of Field Experiments, and his 1935 book, The Design of Experiments. His 1925 book, Statistical Methods for Research Workers, has served as a guide for generations of statisticians. In 1933, Pearson resigned his post at University College London, and Fisher was named his successor as the second Galton Professor of Eugenics. Pearson's son, Egon, was appointed head of the Statistics Department at University College London. 
Frank Yates, who had worked at Rothamsted since 1931, followed in Fisher's footsteps at Rothamsted, contributing significantly to experimental design. During the second decade of this century, the need for and interest in mathematical statistics was growing in the United States. The earliest work of substance on mathematical statistics in the U.S. was due largely to Henry Reitz. Reitz received his Ph.D. in 1902 from Cornell University, taught for a time at the University of Illinois, and settled at the University of Iowa in 1918. He was well informed about the conceptual developments in mathematical statistics in Europe and actively worked to transplant these ideas into the United States. Harry Carver was another major proponent of mathematical statistics in those early years. While World War I raged in Europe, Carver was asked to teach a course on mathematical statistics at the University of Michigan. At the time, no American writers covered what Carver envisioned as mathematical statistics. So he developed a new, more theoretical outline for the course, using Yule's text and papers from Pearson, Gossett, and Fisher. Undoubtedly, Carver's greatest contribution was the founding of the Annals of Mathematical Statistics, first published in February 1930, and presently published as the Annals of Statistics and the Annals of Probability. At Carver's prompting, on September 12, 1935, Several persons gathered at Michigan to form an organization known as the Institute of Mathematical Statistics, with Reitz as president, Walter Schuhart as vice president, and Alan Craig as secretary treasurer. With the Annals of Mathematical Statistics as its primary publication, the Institute gave new focus to research on the mathematical theory of statistics. By the 1930s, the Atlantic Ocean was no longer a barrier to the free flow of ideas in mathematical statistics. Jersey Neyman and Egon Pearson developed a rigorous theory for testing statistical hypotheses based on the Neyman-Pearson lemma. Other early contributors to the mathematical theory of statistics included William Cochrane, who proved that certain quadratic forms possess a chi-square distribution. R.C. Bose, who developed much of the theory for partially balanced experimental designs. And P.C. Mahalanobis, Harold Hotelling, Samuel Wilkes, John Wishart, and S.N. Roy, who extended many results to multivariate data. As part of the centenary celebration of ASA in 1939, Davis Dewey, who had labored long and hard with Francis Walker on behalf of the ASA, brought these developments into focus when he recalled the changes he had seen since the 1880s. Statistics, as I knew it a half century ago, was a humble worker in the Society of Arts and Sciences, which was trying to explain the happenings of this complicated world. Statistics at that time was wedded to another humble toiler, arithmetic. Since then, statistics has grown in many ways and has taken unto itself algebra, geometry, and calculus. A rapid growth in applied statistics accompanied the expansion of statistical theory and provided fertile ground for continued theoretical research and development. For example, quality control, now so visible in our high technology society, had its beginnings in the 1920s when Walter Schuhart of Western Electric and Bell Laboratories developed a simple workable control chart. In 1929, Harold Dodge, the originator of the operating characteristic curve for sampling inspection procedures, published with Harry Romig a classic paper entitled A Method of Sampling Inspection in the Bell System Technical Journal. This led to courses sponsored by the War Department in the late 1930s, taught by Dodge. By the advent of World War II, W. Edwards Deming also had initiated a program that included a series of 10-day courses on quality control given by notable statisticians such as Samuel Wilkes, Walter Schuhart, Holbrook Working, Eugene Grant, Boyd Harshbarger, and Deming himself. These developments, starting in the 1920s and continuing through World War II, spurred the application of statistics to engineering problems. Many other areas of statistical application grew rapidly during the 1930s. The value of well-designed sampling plans was given a tremendous boost with the successful completion of the 1937 Unemployment Census, which was designed largely by Calvert Diedrich and Morris Hansen of the Census Bureau. Sampling research and application accelerated with the addition of Ed Deming, William Hurwitz, 
Phil Hauser, and William Maddow to the Census Bureau. Opinion polls such as the Gallup poll also emerged at this time. Other government statisticians provided leadership and applications of statistics, including Jack Uden and Churchill Eisenhart at the National Bureau of Standards, Jerome Cornfield at the National Institutes of Health, and William Callender of the Crop Reporting Board of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Biometry and medical statistics grew rapidly at this time. Joseph Berkson provided leadership at the Mayo Clinic. Chester Bliss and David Finney developed statistical methods in bioassay. And Bradford Hill applied Fisher's ideas of randomization to clinical trials of antibiotics. The ASA responded to the growing interest in biological applications of statistics by chartering the biometric section in 1938 as the first section of ASA. As theory and application pushed forward, the need for university courses and programs grew. Although Richmond Mayo Smith had taught from his applied statistics text at Columbia from the early 1890s, the Department of Biostatistics at the Johns Hopkins University, founded in 1918 by Raymond Pearl, was the first in the United States with statistics in the title. However, the strongest leadership on the academic front in those early years came from George Snedeker at Iowa State University driven by the application of statistical methods to agricultural problems. He offered a course in statistics at Iowa State as early as 1914. In 1924, Snedeker and Henry Wallace, who later became vice president of the United States, organized a series of Saturday afternoon seminars for agricultural research workers. This effort led to establishing the Mathematical Statistical Service in 1927 which developed into the Statistical Laboratory in 1933. Snedeker was instrumental in transporting the work of Ronald Fisher to the United States, and at the invitation of Snedeker, Fisher spent the summer of 1931 at Iowa State. Snedeker had a tremendous knack for teaching applied statistics, and he made the application of statistical methods understandable for research workers in many fields. Snedeker's text, Statistical Methods, first published in 1937, has been through numerous editions. It continues to be one of the most cited publications in the Science Citation Index, clear testimony to its impact on the development of science and technology. As Carl Pearson had done earlier in the century at University College London, Snedeker established Iowa State as a focal point for research on statistical theory and methods. William Cochran and Charles Windsor were on the faculty there, and Gertrude Cox was the first Master of Science graduate in statistics from Iowa State University in 1931. Cox went on to organize and head the Department of Experimental Statistics at North Carolina State University in 1940. In 1944, she organized the Institute of Statistics, which was expanded in 1946 to include a Department of Mathematical Statistics, and expanded again in 1949 to include a department of biostatistics, both at the University of North Carolina. The Department of Experimental Statistics remained at North Carolina State University. The statistical efforts at Iowa State culminated in the formation of the Statistics Department in 1947, and in 1950, Theodore Bancroft was named the first permanent head of the department. Throughout the United States, academic statisticians were forming statistical laboratories, consulting services, and separate departments. Key figures were Raymond Pearl at Johns Hopkins, George Snedeker at Iowa State, Holbrook Working at Stanford, Harold Hotelling, and later Abraham Wald and Jacob Wolfowitz at Columbia, Frank Wyda at George Washington, Samuel Wilkes at Princeton, Jersey Naiman at Berkeley, Gertrude Cox at North Carolina State, Boyd Harshbarger at Virginia Tech, Walter Wilcox at Cornell, and Chester Bliss at Connecticut and later at Yale. The rapid expansion of statistical theory and application in government and industry began shortly after World War I and grew rapidly through World War II. The ASA adapted to the growing needs of its members during this vibrant era. JASA became more flexible and gradually shifted its emphasis away from descriptive articles and toward more analytical work. In order to meet the needs of smaller groups of statisticians, the formation of local chapters began in the late 1920s in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Boston, and other industrial cities of the Upper Midwest. 
As previously mentioned, sections were also formed starting with the biometrics section in 1938, followed by the section on statistical education in 1944. In 1935, ASA moved its headquarters to Washington, D.C., and in 1936, ASA appointed its first full-time paid executive director and secretary, Frederick Stefan, thus solidifying its commitment to the long-term vitality of ASA and its members. In 1944, the ASA continued its progressive movement by electing Helen Walker its first woman president. By the 1940s, the statistical community was growing at an astonishing rate. With World War II as the catalyst, statistical science had come to the fore. Following the war, many statisticians turned their efforts to a great variety of human endeavors. Although a great number of statistical researchers are worthy of note here, future generations will undoubtedly extol their contributions as they withstand the test of time. These researchers produced a tremendous diversification and expansion of statistical science that is difficult to capture in detail. But several trends which have their roots in the distant past are worthy of note. From the early work on probability theory by Jacob Bernoulli and Abraham de Moivre in the late 1600s and early 1700s, to the profound work of Henry Chaffe, Harold Cromer, David Blackwell, Jack Kiefer, and many others that followed, Mathematical statistics continues to be the foundation for statistical thinking. From the origin of statistical graphics in the 1786 book Commercial and Political Atlas by William Playfair to Francis Galton's 1863 representation of multivariate data in weather maps and to Francis Walker's innovative graphical techniques in the first U.S. Atlas in 1870, Graphical statistical methods are an important part of exploratory data analysis and have grown into a field of study of their own. John Grant's 1662 work, Natural and Political Observations Upon Bills of Mortality, in which he studied the plague in London, anticipated the use of modern-day survival techniques, such as the Kaplan-Meier estimator and proportional hazards models. Certainly, these have played an important role in the health and economic welfare of society. And Thomas Bayes's work, An Essay Towards Solving a Problem in the Doctrine of Chances, which appeared in 1764, several years after his death, has been revived in the form of Bayesian statistical inference advanced by Jimmy Savage and other notable statisticians in the 1950s and 1960s. The utility of Bayesian methods remains a popular topic in statistical research and application today. In 1710, John Arbuthnot's essay, An Argument for Divine Providence, taken from the constant regularity observed in the births of both sexes, in which he used the equivalent of a sign test, was a precursor to Charles Spearman's 1904 publication on rank correlation and Frank Wilcoxon's 1945 publication on rank tests. Statisticians have continued to develop the theory and application of what is now known as non-parametric statistical inference. Although many more developments can be traced from modest beginnings hundreds of years ago to modern fields of statistical interest, perhaps the most dramatic advances in statistical science have been aided by advances in computer technology. There is a long history of computing machinery and devices, but the most important breakthrough in computing came from Herman Hollerith of the Census Office. Following the 1880 United States Census, which took nearly eight years to tabulate, Hollerith and others realized the tabulation of the 1890 census would be an insurmountable task. Hollerith left the census office to form his own company, which evolved into IBM. His computing equipment was used for the 1890 census and was a tremendous success. Carl Pearson and later Egon Pearson and H.O. Hartley published the Biometrica Tables for Statisticians which represented a tremendous effort in tabulating critical values of various sampling distributions, moments of order statistics, and many other valuable statistics. Florence David also contributed heavily to the tabulation of statistics associated with the sampling distribution of correlation coefficients and symmetric functions. However, with the advent of computers, many of these laborious calculations are made routinely now. Sophisticated computations, analyses of large data sets, computer simulations, and computer-intensive methods involving resampling and permutation tests are now at the fingertips of statisticians for theoretical developments and practical applications.
The ASA has kept pace with the acceleration of developments related to statistical science. Today, ASA is more involved and committed to the growth of statistics than ever before in its 150-year history. From its small beginning, the ASA has evolved into an international organization of more than 15,000 members, with numerous sections and local chapters to meet the interests and needs of its members, a central headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia, and annual meetings attracting thousands of members. The men who founded the ASA in 1839 may have dreamed of such a result. In the first bound publication in 1843, one of the concluding remarks of the preface states that the members of this newly formed association hope that by increasing progressively in efficiency and usefulness, they shall eventually realize many of the beneficial effects which they anticipate. And they also hope that the society will hold a permanent place among the important institutions which are steadily contributing to the welfare and improvement of this and other countries. Their hopes are now reality. The dedicated men and women of ASA have helped transform the science of statistics from the avocation of a small group of men to a scientific field with scholarly pursuits in research and applications. With a solid foundation based on 150 years of experience, the ASA is poised for continued growth well into the next century and beyond. This presentation was coordinated by Stephen J. Ruberg and was sponsored by the Council of Chapters for the American Statistical Association Sesquicentennial Celebration. Major funding for this project was provided by the following. IMSL, which is pleased to be a major contributor to the filming of this historic video and to offer our congratulations and continued support to the American Statistical Association on the occasion of their sesquicentennial. And by... BMDP, a respected leader in the statistical software field for the past 30 years. And by Burringer Mannheim, new technologies in diagnostics, biochemicals, orthopedics, and now pharmaceuticals. And by Fidia Pharmaceutical Corporation, innovation in neuroscience and excellence in clinical research. Other significant contributors to this project were the following. This has been a presentation of the American Statistical Association.